Have you ever noticed a funky odor in your laundry room or kitchen? And have you ever wondered if your everyday cleaning and laundry products could be harm harmful to your health? If you're interested in optimizing your health and you haven't detoxed your home yet, then today's show is dedicated to you. Steven Ezel is with us today. He is the CEO of Truly Free, True Self Organics, and MemberBox. He's a passionate entrepreneur, philanthropist, and sustainable living enthusiast. He's pioneered the refillable cleaning revolution that has freed over 200,000 homes from toxic chemicals. His company, Truly Free, is responsible for funding a deaf village in, Dama in Jamaica, rescuing over 350 women and children from sex trafficking, and they are also funding orphanages in Mexico, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic. He's a conscious capital thought leader, and Stephen speaks on stages all over the world and has been seen on QVC, NBC, Fox, 9 and 10 News, podcasts, and much more. Welcome to C60 Health Connections, where we meet with leading experts who can help you elevate performance in all aspects of your life. My name is Jessica McNaughton, and I am the CEO at ShopC60.com and C60 Purple Power. I'm a business executive with years of experience in corporate America, and for more than 20 years, I've been exploring various modalities in health, wellness, and spirituality. Now, before we get started... Any statements and products that we talk about today have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration, and any products or topics discussed are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, prevent, or mitigate any disease. So with that, we're going to dive right in. Steven, so great to see you today. Thank you for joining me. I am excited for this conversation. It's going to be a lot of fun. Excited to dive oh. in. I, I, I can't wait. Um, I, I really, I want to start out with um, learning a little bit about your personal journey and how you became so passionate about developing and providing uh, products that are not toxic um, to the marketplace. Sure. So my start, my story on this journey um, started a little over 14 years ago. Um, I now am the proud dad of five children, but um, 14 years ago, I, I had my first son and he was this tiny little baby born a little premature. So he was a little shrimp. And um, my wife is a nurse. She's a NICU nurse. She's working on little babies. And so I was super excited. You know, when you're first time dad, you know, or parent, you know, everything's a really big deal. Now, if everyone's gets breathing and nobody's bleeding, everything's fine. But, you know, when it's your first kid, everything's a really big deal. And I was, you know, I was like, I told my wife, hey, I'm, I, you know, I want to give, you know, give him a bath. Like, I want to do this. I want to be like da super dad. So he was maybe three weeks old. He was this tiny little baby and, you know, got the, like the, the baby thing set up in the, in the sink, the baby tub in the sink and got the towels out. And I started getting him undressed and he is screaming his head off, like screeching. And I thought it was normal, like, cause baby screamed. And as I started getting him undressed for his, you know, for his bath, just, it looked like I dunked him into hot boiling water. And he's like, he, it, like from his neck all the way down to his feet, his ankles were just raised skin. And it, it looked like he was again, scalded in hot water. And I called my wife over cause I freaked out. And when I saw my wife, who's a nurse freak out, then I was like, oh my, this is a really big deal. So, you know, we got him dressed up and went to the pediatrician. The pediatrician was like, wow, he's clearly has a major reaction, something going on, you know, it kept getting worse. We went to a dermatologist from there, dermatologist prescriptions with all these different, you know, steroid this and, you know, pharmaceuticals that and our way to the pharmacy, I got a call that changed my life. You know, my friend, you know, family member called and said, Hey, you know, what's going on with the baby? And I explained what happened and we're going to get these prescriptions. And she goes, have you considered, you know, your laundry detergent? Like, what are you using for laundry? I said, what do you mean? I'm, we're using, you know, the big bright, bright bottle, you know, the one that grandma always used. And says, no, no, you, you can't use those things because, you know, children can have an allergic reaction. They can get sick from that stuff. I said, I, I was so obtuse that this could possibly be real. I said, I'll try anything before we give him all these chemicals. So, you know, we, we stripped his clothes and she gave us this idea of how to strip his clothes, you know, borax and washing soda and stripped his clothes and wash it. And, you know, this kind of homemade non-toxic formula. And then 24 hours, he was fine. 
and I was like, oh my gosh, like if laundry detergent can make my kids sick, what else is in my house? You know, what else is in the laundry room? What's under the kitchen sink? What's in the cupboard? What's in the pantry? So I became like a full blown eco conspiracy theorist, right? Like, <laughs> full, like full on, right? Like full on, you know, we're only eating organic and non GMO. We're doing this, we're doing that. So I kind of became, you know, this kind of like natural, sustainable health freak 14 years ago. And I've been an entrepreneur, you know, my whole life. And um, I love business. And to me, business is ministry. And you know, I met this really awesome grandma who was selling, you know, non-toxic laundry soap at the local farmer's market here in Traverse City, Michigan. And I was a customer and I love the products. And she says, hey, you know, I hear you're an investor. And I said, yeah. And, you know, so we, we, we formed a partnership and started this business. And then, you know, years went by and trying to figure a way. And we started this website. It was called My Greenfills. Um, you know, refillable cleaning products and you get an empty laundry jug in the mail, get refills when you need them. Um, we recently rebranded the company to truly free home, truly free last year, which has been incredible because that's really what we, we represent is truly free, you know, free from toxic chemicals and senseless plastic and this crazy thing called freedom, um, which is fleeting by the moment. So, um, and anyway, so it's been quite the journey. It started off with a sick kid and now we've freed hundreds of thousands of families all over the world with safe, non-toxic products. That's amazing. Um, wow. So I'm just curious, what uh, what was the feedback from your doctors and, and the pediatrician when the solution was literally as simple as changing your laundry detergent? Did you get any feedback? Or Yeah, we talked to the, I said, you know, we actually, because you know, we went, you know, another checkup and, you know, a couple weeks later and said, hey, you know, we said, how did everything work out? I said, great. They said, oh, do you need a refill on the prescriptions? I said, no, we never gave it to him. We never even got the prescription filled. He said, well, how'd that happen? But we just switched his laundry detergent. He had an allergic reaction to laundry detergent. And again, this is a pediatrician. It was just like, oh, yeah, I guess, yeah, I could see how that can happen. So um, yeah, it's bizarro. So, I mean, and again, like, you know, mainstream allopathic, the allopathic world is like, you know, this is wrong. Take two of these, call me in the morning. Instead of addressing the root cause for illness, we just deal with symptoms. Right. And it's way easier and way more profitable to deal with symptoms than it is dealing with the root cause of stuff. Right. Okay. All right. Well, let's dive into this because um, the reason why I'm, I'm really excited to talk to you today, uh, we at... Um, at C60 Purple Power and ChopC60.com, we constantly beat the drum about healthy lifestyle choices. Um, and the thing that I think a lot of people tend to overlook is also the opportunity that they have to clean up their home environment. So um, can you just give us a little bit of an education on, like, what are some of the things that are lurking under the kitchen counter, in the laundry room, you know, there's there's weird smells coming out of either the dishwasher or the um, the washing machine. Like, can you just? I, I don't want to ask you like super basic questions, but I really I want to start at the ground level because I think some of this stuff just goes over people's heads. And like you said, you're using the same products that maybe your mom used or your grandma used and it, and and you you like the smell but you don't really necessarily know what the impact is to your health and some things have changed and you know today more now like more so now than ever our environments are so toxic and um people are are struggling with tons of autoimmune and all sorts of unknown mysterious illnesses and diseases and like with with your son, your, your baby boy being a perfect example, like there could be one thing that you're doing unintentionally that you're unaware of, that it could just be a simple, let's swap this out and get a product that doesn't have all these harmful chemicals in it. So can you just kind of give us kind of like a 101 introductory kind of education on like, what, what do we not know about what's lurking under our, our cabinets? Yeah. So, um, it's a great question. So I look at it this way and I think, you know, I've, one, I love C60. I, I love your products. I take them every day. Um, and, and the message that you guys preach is spot on. But I believe that it's, you know, as far as C60 and, you know, purple power, there's, there's three legs to the stool. 
And you guys do a phenomenal job at addressing one of those legs. And that is what do you put in your mouth? Like what goes in you? Um, and that's a huge thing, right? So what, you know, nutrition supplementation, you know, what do you allow in you? I, I also take that a step further. What belief system, what do you allow in you? What lies do you agree with in your life that you need to detoxify? So the first step and the most important step is what do you allow in you, whether that's spiritual or physical food, supplementation, et cetera. The second thing that, that I believe someone should detoxify is what goes on them. And that's, you know, from your clothing and to the to chemicals, skincare products, sunscreens, perfumes, colognes, like anything that you put on your body needs to be non-toxic. And the last step is the hardest one. And that's what's around you. And that's like your air and your space, right? Where you live. Um, and, and, I, and they, they as in, in that order. So in you, on you and around you. And for years, you know, we, you know, you guys are phenomenal specialists of, of what goes in you. That's never, been, that's not our calling. Our calling is really what goes on you and what goes around you. Meaning this, I think the, the, the number one place that someone should detoxify is their laundry room, you know, and laundry is the single most toxic area of the home. And people say, well, how, how is that possible, right? How can, you know, because I read the back of the aerosol oven cleaner, right? Then that makes it so easy to clean things off, um, you know, in your in your oven is there's skull and crossbones and warnings everywhere. I mean, this stuff is dangerous, but the back of the, you know, the big, bright, you know, detergent bottle, laundry detergent isn't that dangerous. And it's true. So like ounce per ounce, the toxic acuity of a, of oven cleaner is way more nasty than laundry detergent. But how often do you spray oven cleaner over your body? Well, if you're a normal person, the answer is, well, never. But how often do you have laundry chemicals touching your skin? All the time. And uh, so this is where we started, right? It's, it's the biggest category, um, the most competitive category in the industry. I mean, just think about it. You go to your supermarket. And you go to laundry aisle and the entire aisle is full with laundry detergent bottles and fabric softeners. Then you go to the next aisle and it's literally everything else is in one aisle. So the, the laundry chemical industry is by and far multiples larger than all the other categories. And this is what I encourage people to do, right? And this is not a sales pitch for our products is um, number one, buy products that are truly safe. And how you know that is read the ingredients and search the ingredients out. The problem is 90 plus percent of the store-bought stuff don't even tell you what ingredients they put in them. By law, they don't have to. So they can group things in saying surfactants, which are these bubble makers, right? Help clean things. Or they'll just say fragrance or perfume, perfumes, and not tell you what ingredients actually comprise those fragrances. So if you have the ability to research the back of the back of the labels, please do so. You know, we're actually really bad at business because we almost, we pretty much list our formula on the back of our label, hoping that people can, people copy us. We want our competitors to use our product, use our formulas because it'll help a lot more people. Um, so that's the first thing. The next thing is in laundry, stay away from things that are blue and goopy, blue, thick, viscous, and green. Um, and here's the reason why. There's a reason that that most laundry detergents are blue, and that's because they're chemically engineered to leave a blue film, a blue hue on your clothes. Why? So that underneath artificial light, it tricks your eyes into believing your clothes are, br are brighter than they really are. They're called optical brighteners. Check this out. Almost all, let me say that, almost all all mainstream clothing manufacturers before the your before the clothes leave the shop leave the, leave the textile factories these fabrics are doused in flame retardant uh, chemicals and uv brighteners so that when they get to the store they reduce the liability for the store of the store burning down in the event of a fire. Two, these UV brighteners are put on clothing specifically 
for marketing purposes that the clothes look really bright at the store for you to buy them. It's a, it's a, it's a complete opt, it's a complete optical illusion. So um, if you look at the front of like modern cars that have LED, like halogen lights, they they have a blue hue to them. Right. The way that God created our eyes is that that spectrum of light really shows up well for us in the way that God made our eyes. So when you ultraviolet UV brighteners are, are used that are typically blue so that it gives the appearance of bluer, uh, of brighter clothing, even though they're not, it's just an optical illusion. So there's a really sneaky trick. So stay away from blue stuff because the, because the concentration of these chemicals are so, so little, you, you, a little goes a really, really long way. There's a loophole in the, in the United States patent trademark office and in, in the law that states that if a chemical, and this is in the, in the cleaning category, um, that if a chemical is less than 1% concentration in its final um, dilution to the customer, the, the chemical manufacturer is not obligated to post the ingredient. They can just classify it as parfum or fragrance. You don't even have to list it on an MSDS sheet, material safety data sheet in disclosing what those ingredients are. And n- almost exclusively UV brighteners are never put on a label because you don't have to, right? It's just, they're, they're such small concentrations. Same thing with perfumes, right? Um, I don't know about you, but for years, my wife and I, you go to like the mall and you walk in the big stores and mm-hmm. what do they put right at the store is the perfume cosmetics. I don't know, but I get like a crazy headache immediately when I walk into those aisles. I know so many people do. Well, the reason why is the fastest way to pass the blood brain barrier is through the nasal canal. So stay away from things that have perfumes because you don't know what's in them. And, you know, you can literally take toxic sewage. I mean, stuff that if you smelt it smells like absolute putrid sewage. But if you put it in parts per million and mix it with almond oil, it smells like toasted hazelnuts but it's literally toxic sewage. And that's the, that's what perfumers do, right? That's their craft is to find ways to create fragrances out of what could be toxic things. And they have zero obligation legally to tell you what they put on you and that you're breathing in. So this is why people get sick when they, you know, when they get sick and they get headaches when they go to a supermarket, it's like, oh, I'm not feeling good. Well, you've just walked past the laundry aisle. It could be that. It could be lots of things, right? Um, and, you know, there was a study done at Mayo Clinic that over there, there's over 400 household chemicals. They, I, I forgot the, the number of women that were in this panel at Mayo Clinic that they tested the umbilical cord blood. And there's over 350, 400 household chemical compounds in the umbilical cord blood of, of babies. So, you know, we're breathing these chemicals in, we're, we're using them. We're, we're ingesting them. You go to the, you know, you ask, what else, you know, you buy dish soap, these, these pods that go in your dishwasher, these, these products, especially like these dish, you know, pods and powders and, and gels, they're chemically engineered to leave a film on your glasses and your plates. So you get that perfect squeaky clean. And when you add your coffee, you add your food to that plate, you're rehydrating these chemicals. And you're drinking them in. When you sweat and perspire, you're literally rehydrating these laundry chemicals. You're sleeping on them, right? You're 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 sleeping on them. You're wearing them. I mean, God made us to detoxify through our armpits, right through the bottoms of our feet, through the ba- ba- behind our knees. You're you're sweating there. You're supposed to perspire. No, no, no. You're not supposed to perspire. So we're loading people, especially women with these aluminum antiperspirants. You can't, you actually can't sweat, right? And these are toxic metals going into the bloodstream. If uh, you you do sweat, you're making these micro suds on your skin. And now you're, these, these chemicals are on you. So we're being bombarded all day long with chemicals. Um, and, no, and, and very few people are talking about it. I mean, you are, right? Congratulations to you. Um, you know, talking about and bringing awareness to these things, but that's what's happening in the industry. And it's been happening for decades. It's generational, right. um, you know, people believing that, you know, their clothes or whatever is clean, if it smells good, not knowing that if they, they may be breathing in a carcinogen and not even being given the right to know that. Anyway, I'll get off my horse now. What other questions you got? <laughs> um, 
<laughs> you just dropped so many bombs on us. I, I, this is great. It's it's scary as shit, but it's great, right? It's it <laughs> because because if you don't know it, you can't do anything about it, right? So like the goal here is to help empower people to make educated decisions and to really help consumers think through how and where they're spending their money to support their health and their overall well-being. So I want, I want to go back just a couple minutes, if you don't mind, to what you said about um, brand new clothes being doused in flame retardant and UV brighteners. Okay, so let's talk about the shirt you're wearing or, or the jacket that I'm wearing, right? So you go and you get, you know, your shirt or your jacket. And um, <clears throat> so what do you recommend? Do you recommend that you go and you wash these clothes immediately? Like, is it possible to get these toxins off of the clothes or, or? You can get UV brighteners out of clothes fairly easily. Okay. Um, if you use a non-toxic formula, that's clean rinsing, right? Um, like a lot of our source ingredients that we use are, are mined mineral salts sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, which is like bake, which is baking soda, citric acid, right? Which is made from corn, et cetera, et cetera. Like these are clean rinsing agents that do a really great job at emulsifying, not really emulsifying, but releasing and clean rinsing away UV brighteners. Flame retardants are a different animal. These are engineered to stick on fabrics for almost ever. Yeah. Especially in, in, the, in the areas that are the most dangerous, the types of fabrics are the fleeces. You know, a lot of the synthetic fabrics that, you know, fleeces and um, whatever, the poly whatever type fabrics, whether that's polyester, polyfreeze, et cetera, the, the poly type products, they add these. Um, uh, flame retardants and the cure to get it off is almost worse than the disease. So you, we just have to be cognizant that you should really buy organic cotton, okay. right? Because yeah. cotton itself is typically, typically not treated with flame retardants. It's really the, the polyesters, the fleeces and things like that. Microfibers, those are, you know, the, you know, there's a very famous, you know, yoga pant brand um, that has a, you know, a, a fruit in it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a lot of these, these synth highly synthetic fabrics, which are high tech, I mean, these are like really cool textiles. They add these chemical compounds to them. There's actually a really awesome documentary that was done about a decade ago called Stink. Phenomenal phenomenal expose and documentary about the fragrance industry talks about, um, and exposing these flame retardants. Um, there was, there's a major kids brand that, that this one documentary person brings up, um, that, you know, makes children's clothing and the children's clothing and the pajamas are doused in these flame retardant chemicals. And they, these are documented hormone disruptors, endocrine disruptors, documented carcinogens, and we're buying like, you know, these really, you know, cartoon-esque, you know, uh, pajamas for our kids thinking like, oh, like we're super parents and we're yeah. literally putting poison on our children. Um, so like in our house, you know, we, we try and stay away from those things. Can you do it all the time? Unfortunately not. Right. I mean, and so you got, you just got to make, you know, the wisest decisions with the information that, you know, and on your budget as you can. You know, the most important thing is what you put through your mouth. The second most important thing is what you put on your back. Um, and then, you know, things that you could put around you, like the things that you're breathing in and your environment um, as much as possible. I, uh, I have to think too, that like any, any kind of athleisure wear that you're wearing that wicks, that's designed to wick away sweat would likely have some of these chemicals in them as well. Is that accurate or am I off? Yeah. So there? like those, yeah. So those, these high tech fabrics, you know, like, like really, these are really state of the art fabrics, mm -hmm. um, really cool things that are designed to wick. And there's a reason why they, you know, these, these textile companies that like, they always recommend that people don't use fabric softeners on their products, right? Cause fabric softeners are, 
notorious, not notorious, they're, they're chemically engineered to leave a silicone film on your clothes, on fat. You ever, you ever get out of the shower at a hotel or if you are listening at home, if, you know, use, you know, the big, you know, teddy bear type, you know, fabric softeners, the real thick goopy stuff. And you get out of the shower and you like grab a towel and you're not getting dry. You're like, yeah. Like, why am I not getting dry? And the reason why I'm getting dry is because literally the cotton fibers or the polyester fibers in those towels are already completely consumed by these silicone chemicals. So you have this appearance that feels, oh my gosh, smells so great, so soft. I just want to snuggle up to these things. Well, you're not getting dry because there's nothing to absorb. The, the, the towel is fully absorbed, all these crazy chemicals. So it gives you the appearance of softness, but there's no absorbency. Same thing happens with these high-tech fabrics that are designed to wick away your sweat. Well, the problem is if those, if those fibers are clogged with silicone-based chemicals, perfumes and, and surfactants and all this goopy stuff, it can't wick away. That's why these high-tech fabrics, after you wash them in conventional stuff, they stink. You can't get that funky stink out of them is because it's a, it becomes a breeding ground for bacteria. And that's what causes the odors. I'm sorry, I'm dropping a lot of crazy stuff that's going on, but this is, this is what's happening. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's so interesting. I've, I've, I've definitely noticed that, especially like when you buy some new towels, if they're, if they're cheap towels and you try to dry off and you're just like, I cannot, I, I cannot get dry. Like, and I, this I, I is, never, this is marketing. So when you're at the yeah. store, when you're at a store, how, how often have you bought a towel at the store without feeling how, feeling how soft it feels? Yeah. You just grab it and put it in the basket and go. Yeah. The answer is never, right? You're always like, I wonder how soft this is going to feel because it's going to go mm-hmm. on me, right? Well, they know that, right? The, the, the manufacturers know that. So they went in the, at, at, the, at the beginning or the end of the manufacturing process. These textiles are run through and put these chemicals on them so that they can sell them to you. Right. And this is, you know, so 14 years ago, I told you a story and I became this eco conspiracy theorist. And I was like, oh, all these companies trying to kill us. They're not trying to kill you. I, I, I put it this way. I'd like to believe that, that these big, co- these companies that are making these products, chemicals or textiles are benevolent. They actually have the best intention in mind. They don't want to kill you. They want to sell you. Mm-hmm. Right. They want to sell money. you stuff. They just want right. to make money. They just want to sell you stuff. They don't want to kill you. They want to sell you. So, you know, and, and, and I use this analogy often is like, you know, we go to the store now, you go to the big box store, go to Costco and you buy, I, I don't know how many bins of organic spinach we bought from Costco over the years, right? I, it's like I pallets full of them at my house, right? <laughs> well, here's the thing, like organic spinach is the same price as spinach now, the, the chemical GMO crazy stuff. Well, why is that? Because a bunch of farmers became philanthropists? No. It's because enough people said, I want organic spinach, and they were willing to pay for it. And what happened was so many people were reading, oh, the spinach is getting a coli, and we need organic this, that farmers had to figure out how to scale production of organic, non-GMO spinach, or they were going to lose market share. Right. So enough consumers voted with their dollars, businesses had to pivot, and now organic spinach, I mean, how often do you go to store and see spinach? I mean, the organic spinach offer, you know, aisle, you know, offering is three times as big, and it's pretty much the same price. It's because consumers voted. Yep. The more the more we vote with conscious companies that are doing good things, industries will pivot. I mean, there's a yeah. reason why you go to the store now. We, you know, all these major companies are doing refills, right? It's just re- release a refill platform. To release a, a refill platform, why? Because I invented it. We pioneered it. We started the industry. We showed that enough people were willing to vote with their dollars that they didn't want to throw plastic in the ocean. They didn't want plastic going to the landfill. They wanted refills. We pioneered it. It took. It was really hard for us to shift an industry. We shifted an industry. Now all these major companies are trying to keep up with us. Why? Because we pioneered. So enough people said, "This is what we want." Industries pivot. Uh, I think that's. <sighs> It's such a great example that you've shared with us. Um, and it is a, a truly empowering message because you might feel like, gosh, this is overwhelming. There's 
oh, what am I going to do? I Like I live in Colorado and it's cold here. And so I have a fleece. I have a few fleece <laughs> jackets. And uh, so do yeah. I. I mean, I, ha- I want to be, be warm and cozy, but uh, guess what? <laughs> I might not buy one again. So thank you for opening my mind. Buy wool. Buy wool. wool. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And here's the thing. Like I know like wool. Oh my gosh. It's so much more expensive. It is. It's so much more expensive and it will last you for years. Mm-hmm. Right. Your fleece will, it, it'll pill. It'll get this. And it's really comfortable. It's, I mean, like, but it'll pill. I buy now I buy more flannel. I buy more wool. Am I perfect? Do I have, every, listen, I, I'm not on a hill saying I've got it all figured out. Right? right. And I know all this stuff too, but it's also like, I have a budget. Right. I can't afford I have five do. children, we have I have yeah. seven children. And it's like, it's cheaper to feed, you know, clothe them and it's to feed them. So it's like, you know, you can only do what we can with the resources that God gave me. So, I mean, do all my kids. Yeah. They, we have fleeces and we, I know it. So we know we try and clean them and we rinse them and we strip them and we do all these things, but we just, you, you gotta just don't be overwhelmed. I know like I'm throwing a lot of stuff at people that you probably have never heard before. Yeah. And please, I dare you to research this stuff and prove me wrong. I, I double dog dare you. Let's now that you, now that you can't do, prove yeah. me wrong, don't be overwhelmed, right? Don't be overwhelmed. It's okay. Now, you know, start taking little, little steps one at a time and you'll, and it'll be okay. Okay. Let's talk about mold because <clears throat> dishwashers, I mean, you, you explained to us all the things that are in the dishwasher, but there, there is mold everywhere. And it's in, it's oftentimes in your washing machine or in your dishwasher and you don't really know it and it's just kind of funky and you can you can kind of tell that it's there but like what like what should people do about that because mold we know has um, very negative impacts on our health sure so the number one place in the home for that for mold creation is laundry um and that's because it's typically in a basement it's in a closet it's in a small room um, it's not like, you know, how many people have their laundry machines in their living room where it's big and open? Uh, none. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I did it at my hunting shack years ago, but that's a different story. Uh, <laughs> takeaway messages, you know, so the, so typically laundry is in a small room. It's in a basement. It's damp. It's moist, right? It's dark. There's no light, which is all perfect conditions for mold to grow. The next piece is that, you know, similar, we talked about how these chemicals you know, in laundry or in dish detergent, leave this film on towels or clothes and pillows, but they also leave a film inside the washer, inside the dishwasher. And the way that, you know, let's say a front load washing machine looks is you see like, you know, the big drum with all the holes in it, but then behind that, there's another drum, right? Like tank that that drum sits in. That's, that's, that's where the water, you know, goes in. You can't clean that, right? And you don't see past those little tiny holes where the water drains. And, you know, the rubber gaskets and right underneath and the tops. So there's water splashing around. And those, that water has, you know, these laundry chemicals and has, 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 has pulled away your, you know, your ketchup stain, right? You had ketchup or, you know, spaghetti sauce on your, on your towel, your dish towel, or you clean the countertops and you spilled you know, olive oil on the countertops. So you have like this on your dish rag. And so you put your rags and your clothes in the washer. And now it's getting cleaned by this, these, these chemicals. And now it's leaving this film on the, on the washer. And that you now have this organic material and you have moisture and you have dampness and you have warmth. And and it just becomes this breeding ground for bacteria and for mold. So what you could do is um, you can grab about three cupfuls of baking soda. You can grab a, a few cupfuls of citric acid that you can get at the canning store, at the canning supply. Um, you can get borax. You get a few about you know five or six cupfuls of um, of vinegar, right? So household style vinegar, white white distilled vinegar. And you can throw it in your washer on a super hot cycle and it'll help break that stuff away. We actually make a product. It's called a laundry machine cleaner. It's a very fancy name. And you take the sachet, you throw it in and it does all that in one convenient step. It's not toxic and it cleans that. We also even have a, a dishwasher cleaner and you should run these things on a regular basis, whether using our products or any products, just because 
you know, you have food matter, you have, you know, organic material that you just want to make sure that the, that those areas stay clean. Um, but especially when you're using the store-bought dish goopy colored stuff, my goodness, you want to get those chemicals and that residual stuff out of your dishwasher, or your washing machine, because they are breeding grounds for mold. And you're breathing this stuff in, you're washing it into your clothes, um, washing it onto your plates, your coffee mug, drinking it, nasty stuff. Okay. So how often should you do the the clean? At home, we wash, we, we want to cycle. And again, we have five kids, so seven humans. Um, we run the dishwasher two to three times a day, seven days a week. Yeah. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we, and we homeschool. So like, you know, there's, you know, there's always, and we're always cooking. Like we don't, mm-hmm. you know, we eat out. We only eat out of very few places because I want to trust where we go. Um, and so we loved, and, and I'm a former chef. I used to be a restaurateur years ago. I built 50 restaurants in New York city. That's where I started my career. So we love to cook and great food and we garden and farm and, you know, so we cook, we, so once a week, we clean our dishwasher and probably once every couple of weeks, we run a laundry machine cleaner through our washing machine. If you're using, or if you're still addicted to kind of store-bought, like goopy laundry and just, I just can't live without the smell. Then you should probably clean your, 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 your laundry machine. Um, every three to five loads, you should probably clean out that dishwasher, your, your washing machine. If you're using the, you know, the, the real colorful, tablet pods and stuff like that in your dishwasher, you should probably clean your dishwasher out every three to five loads. If you're using, you know, a non-toxic product, you know, Dr. Bronner's, is, they make some really, you know, good products. They're a competitor of ours, but I think they're a really great company. If you're using products like ours, um, I would say every 15, you know, 10 to 15, 30 loads of stuff, you can, you, you should probably clean things out. Um, not as necessary on a regular basis. If you're using, the toxic stuff, like on the regular. Wow. And you, you said your products are actually just called laundry cleaner, dishwasher cleaner. Yeah. We don't get really, you know, we have, our name is truly free and we make laundry wash and laundry rinse and everyday cleaner and degreaser and laundry machine cleaner and dishwasher cleaner. You know, we, I, we just, you know, I built this on the premise that we're just going to let the products stand on their own, right? We're going to let the product speaks for themselves. We're not going to trick people in with crazy marketing. We're just going to tell the truth and trust that God brings us the right customers. And we do, and people stay. And we, we don't even call them customers. We, we, we have family members because they're like family, mm-hmm. you know, and, and uh, yeah. So people buy our stuff. They stay with us for a long time and we serve them and we work really hard to make, you know, our family members happy. And like every family, it's messy and, we, you know, we get behind in shipping sometimes because we're growing so fast and, but we do the best that we can. And we have really amazing, you know, what normal people call customers and they give us feedback and they tell us what they want us to make and create. And we, we make it right. We create the products that people ask us to make. And that's why I acquired true self organics. It was a great company, great brand, all plant-based vegan, non-toxic skincare. So we acquired that company. It's been phenomenal. Right. We're launching new skincare products that are safe because, you know, and we want we want we want to expose women's beauty. Right. Help them heal from the inside out and expose you. But not you know, skincare companies that put all these pictures up of like, look at how beautiful you look. She doesn't look like that. She's Photoshop. Somebody just spent 18 hours airbrushing and photoshopping her image. It's mm-hmm. not what she looks like. And those products that make her look like that. Right. So, you know, we want to expose your truth in you, right? That's where we are truly free. We want to expose your truth. Um, and we just want to stand in the gap for people that are just being lied to. I love that. Thank you for not lying to us, Stephen. It takes courage. It takes Life's courage. too short. Speak Life's too short. And, um, you know, help, help uncover um, some of these lies and manipulations that that we've all been exposed to. So can you talk to us just a little bit about, I know you're not a medical doctor and neither am I, so we're not going to go there, but um, can you talk to us just about a little bit about based on the work that you do and what you've seen with your customers, AKA your family, um, <clears throat> what, what types of health changes have you been witness to when people are able to clean up these toxins that they had previously been putting on their bodies? Yeah, that's a, a really loaded question that I'm sure I will, will I'm glad for the disc- disclaimer in the beginning of the, uh, 
of the podcast here. You can tiptoe around this if you want, but I just, I, I'm just kind of, I know you referenced your son's skin issue. So but- let, let me tell you what, what myself, my wife, who are very sensitive to, to things yeah. um, ha- have experienced, right? I know like when I go to the store and I'm, I don't care what store it is and I'm close to that laundry aisle. And of course I always gravitate to it because I want to see what the world is doing. I get headaches. So um, I get really sensitive to those types of smells. And if people are, you know, are sensitive to those types of smells, I know you could see a huge, a huge transformation by not putting those types of chemicals in your house. The types of those, the things that you plug in your outlet that make the house smell something. Those give me a headache too. Oh my gosh. Those things are wicked crazy. So, you know, stay away from those things. And, and, you know, clearly, so from the headache side, you know, we've heard stories that, you know, that are people are on a, on a healing journey that are trying to detoxify their bodies based on whatever journey that is, whether it's an autoimmune thing or, you know, a cancer diagnosis. Um, we've heard amazing stories that, you know, and again, I can't say that our products or a cleaning chemical company can, can make that type of impact on somebody's health. But I know that we are one or two or three cogs in that wheel, right? We're, we're like detoxifying the things that go on you and around you are a huge component of that healing process, that healing journey. I've witnessed it in my own life and in the life of my family. The, the most, right, is like the things that go in you, right? So like when you're, you know, the types of food supplementation, things that go in you, like those probably occupy 70 or 80, 90% of the cogs in the wheel. Um, you know, we occupy a very small branch, but we believe it's a very supportive one. Okay. Thank you. Like what's, what's so different about your products? I know you said that they are free of chemicals. Is there anything else really specific that would be enlightening for our audience to understand? Yeah. Well, to be clear, all of our products have chemicals in them. They're all chemicals. Um, they're just plant-based non-toxic chemicals and that are all designed to be free rinsing, free cleaning. Um, we don't put that we we refuse to put ingredients in our products for the sake of complexity or for the sake of you know things that don't actually provide efficacy. Meaning we're not going to add thickeners because we want you to think that the products are super concentrated, like almost everybody else that has thick products. We don't add um you know, uh, UV brighteners for the sake of tricking you into thinking that your clothes are clean. We're just going to get your clothes clean. You know, we don't add dyes in our products to make you think like, oh, there's just some special ingredient in there because 99% of all the chemicals that I could buy toxic or non-toxic to make a cleaning product are either clear or maybe pale yellow. They don't have a color to, there's no blue chemicals. There are no orange or green or purple raw ingredients. So those are all dyes. We don't put them in there. So, you know, we said if, if it doesn't provide the desired outcome, which is if it's a our heavy duty degreaser, it's got to clean a really nasty oven, a stove, a car, an engine block. I use that product all the time because I'm a mess and I have a farm. So we use, I use degreaser all the time. It's got to do that, nothing else, right? It's got to perform what we promised to our family members that it's going to do. And if it doesn't do that, doesn't belong in it, we don't make it. Um, we list all of all ingredients on our labels. So you people can do, you know, folks can do their research and I encourage you to do it. Um, and so that's it. And then we just took a very route of simplicity and just make things work. I and love don't that. sell people what they don't need. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying, clarifying that for me because I, I misspoke there. Um, no, it's okay. I mean, it, people, because not all chemicals are bad, right? I mean, yeah. Um, but some of them are. Thank you. Okay. And so I know that you mentioned be on the lookout for blue or green or extra goopy. Are there any other things that we should be on the lookout for when we want to, um, be avoiding toxins in our home or bringing them into our home? Fragrances, anything that smells, right? I think that's like number one, you know, number one target and it's everything. Does that include candles? It includes candles. It includes the the, the plug type things. It, it, um, Is it the sprays that you spray on your furniture too? You know that there's a, a, a company 
that um, makes a spray. Yeah, that's very. Um, and that company, the, one of the main ingredients in most of their products, not all of them, um, is chemically engineered to actually kill your olfactory senses. So it actually kills the mucous membranes in your nose temporarily so that when it's like, oh my gosh, everything, it, it cleared up the smell. No, it killed your ability to smell for the next 45 seconds and then left fragrances behind. So like we have an odor and stain eliminator that we use natural enzyme and natural bacteria that are designed to attack the bacteria and the smells at the microbial level. So it kind of kills that funky, those funky odors and it doesn't leave anything behind. So once it's done digesting the funky odors, it's, it turns to salt. It's like gone. So, um, so yeah, so stay away from those things. Um, and I mean, mostly just folks do your research, right? Just check things out. Like, you know, yeah. you, if you've gotten this far into this podcast, like you're probably pretty rattled right now. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I did it because I love you. So do your research. Don't be overwhelmed. Just piece by piece, you know, do you, you know, learn what you, you know, whatever you're passionate about in life, that's the things that you'll change, yeah. right? The things that, so yeah, just one step at a time. Well, Steven, I just, um, I really want to commend you and just send you so much like gratitude and appreciation because there are, um, I think there's a, there's, there's people that do this on the planet, but they're not necessarily always visible. And so I just really appreciate you for walk, not only talking the talk, but walking the walk and that you have been able to, you, you have integrity, like with, with all of your values and you've brought all of those things together with your personal and your professional life and you're sharing your knowledge and your beliefs and your passion with the world. Um, and you're making the world a better, safer place for all of us, um, from an environmental standpoint. So thank you. Thank you very much for that. First and foremost. Um, I, I want to kind of shift gears here a little bit because there's something else that you're doing that is really powerful and impactful and important on the planet. Um, and, you're you're helping raise the consciousness around this issue that is hundreds if not thousands of years old and that's human trafficking and um it's something that you're when people come and they buy your products they're also helping to support addressing and mitigating and dealing with this issue and and the victims who are impacted by human trafficking specifically women and children so um can we talk a little bit about how how did your personal journey lead you, lead you into having such an interest and a desire to help support about this issue, which many people don't realize how prolific it is. However, um, there is a, a rising consciousness and awareness around this. Um, it's been it's been suppressed, the information about it, but um, it's critical. So can you just talk to us a little bit about how you got involved um, with helping women and children in this space? So I am... If you notice in the last whatever hour that we're, whatever long we're going after this, I'm pretty passionate about creating change. And I guess this stems from me being a kid that got beat up as a kid in the South Bronx. And I had to become a street fighting bullies bully. And when I see people getting bullied, I just want to pick a fight with the bully. Yeah. And so that's kind of like an innate thing in me is to, is to not roll over and play dead, but be a bully's bully. And, you know, when you talk about like this information suppression, you know, if you think any of these crazy facts we just dropped, or, and again, I dare you to test me, if any of these facts on whatever UV brighteners or, uh, flame retardant chemicals. If any of this is false, cool. I dare you to find, well, fact check this. There are more slaves on earth today enslaved than any other time in human history. Yeah. Period. Story, the end. And nobody's talking about it. There, I said, it's not true. There are some amazing organizations like Operation Underground Railroad, you know, Tim Ballard. Oh my gosh, what an amazing leader. You know, there's a, there's some people that are definitely talking about, there's lots of Christian ministries that are doing these, you know, outreaches, but 
you know, for the, the size of this true, true pandemic, this true epidemic of, of, of incredible proportions, that there are more women and children, specifically, there's men too, but for the most part, women and children that are being trafficked today than ever in recorded history. And very few people are talking about this. Um, so th th that journey for me started when we, you know, we started my green fills. We, we wanted to create a dryer sheet alternative, dryer sheets, again, another toxic area. So we came up with this idea for you know, a dryer sheet alternative. I'll, I'll, that, I'll leave the backstory out of it. That didn't go anywhere. And then we, came up, we, we met this ministry called Caribbean Christian Centers for the Deaf CCCD, amazing organization that um, has two farms in Jamaica that house and, and educate the deaf of Jamaica that have been extraordinarily marginalized, many of which abused and, and punished and trafficked internally. So many years ago, they started this ministry and it's so awesome. I fell in love with the story. Um, and they came to us for a donation. I said, I, we didn't have, I didn't have anything to donate, right? We started this company, almost went out of business. Like starting this website was my last ditch effort to save the company. That's another, you know, the entrepreneur story is another story, but needless to say, um, I said, Hey, do you guys have any sewing machines? Yeah, we got a couple. I said, well, we have this idea. It's called dryer angels. And you, you know, I don't have one on my desk, but you know, you, it's a dryer sheet. You take it's You have a, underneath the dress. You put this, this sachet full of organic you know, corn cob material with essential oils and you throw it in the dryer, flip your clothes. Would you make this for us? Yeah. Um, so we pay them a lot of money, way more than I would pay if I were to buy them overseas and, um, you know, in some sweatshop or automated machine shop. And we pay them a ton of money um, to make these hand sewn angels. And now we have 12 full time women, start off with two. And we have 12 full-time women in Jamaica that hand sew dryer angels for us. And years went by and we grew a lot and they couldn't keep up with our growth. So then we partnered up with another group um, called Seed Livelihood, where we go into these, you know, in Southeast Asia and, and in Asia, these really oppressed areas, red light districts. And we have these kind of like a network of sewing shops that they've started, which now we fund where we fund um, and employ handicapped women, many of which were formerly trafficked and been through some amazing circumstances. But moreover, we have we fund these operations where we rescue women from sex trafficking, from being punished and really abused, some of which literally get bought. We literally run these, we buy them. We, I hate to say, I'm saying this on record radio. These women get bought, but instead of their typical trade, they get healed, right? They get rehabilitated. They get taught worth. They get freed, right? They get taught the gospel. And then once they're rehabilitated and like they get sustainable jobs working for us, making dryer angels. <laughs> so, um, and that's how like, hey, this is where business and ministry, I don't see that. See, to me, I don't see this difference, you know, and what is, you know, empowering the deaf or freeing sex trafficked women have to do with laundry. Nothing. Well, to us, it's everything. So um, this is one of the things we do. And yeah, we, we've, you know, we've, we've built orphanages in, in, in Mexico, have hundreds of children that we take care of now that we fund this really amazing group, Chris, you know, for his, um, um, uh, this, this amazing foundation for his ministry foundation. We've built now churches and orphanages and freed women, and, and young teenage girls, super vulnerable girls that have been trafficked in Haiti and Dominican Republic, right on the border there, they were doing some grassroots things. So we're, you know, constantly looking for opportunities to just do good. It all, I had this thesis many years ago, you know, listen, in, in on, on April 4th, I'm, you know, where this recording is going to go out, but in a couple of weeks from now, I'm at this for a decade. And I, and when I invested and bought this company and, and I said, I had this idea a decade ago that you could build a really big, cool company that scales and does all those really big, fancy business things, but could actually do good work. They could do good work for the environment, good, do good work for you, have real impact on people's lives in the environment. And I think we're proof now that it's possible, right? Um, it's no longer an idea. It's proof that 
you know, so if you're an entrepreneur listening to Jess and I kind of rap on this stuff, like now's your chance to make an impact, like do good things. And you know what, you'll attract the right employees that come around you. You'll attract the right customers, member, family members to come around you that'll support your cause. And, you know, the more we do this and inspire people to take action, the markets will have to change because if the markets don't change, then I take over all the markets, <laughs> right? So, and I know that I'm not going to do that. So, you know, businesses will have no choice but to pivot. Um, and that's my hope is to, you know, not only inspire enough consumers to vote differently with their dollars, but inspire enough companies to change the way they do business and yeah. do good things. Yeah. Well, Stephen, you're just, you're, you're truly leading by example. So again, thank you so much. And thank you for sharing all of this with us. And for those of you who are still with us on this journey, <laughs> in this conversation, if you weren't impressed by Stephen before, I'm sure you're just absolutely blown away now. Um, and if you didn't, if you, if, if the environmental and the health reason to, um, to make a change with your, uh, laundry and cleaning products wasn't there, uh, wasn't, wasn't enough for you, then hopefully understanding kind of um, what else his companies are doing to support the greater good and to really help um, women and children and people who have been victimized across the planet, planet in horrific ways. Um, you know, Stephen, it's just, it's, it's so good to know that you exist and that you're doing this work. And um, thank you. We need, we need more people like you and you are, you're truly an inspiration and a gift to us all. So um, I know we're, we're running short on time here. So I really want to give everyone just an opportunity. How can they get in touch with you? Can you tell us about, um, we'll pop up all the links here and we'll put everything in our show notes too, but uh, just give us a couple of minutes on where people can find you, connect with you on social, go to your website, uh, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. So our main site is trulyfreehome.com, you know, but for, you know, uh, Purple Power CC, you know, we, we've created a really amazing opportunity. You get a hundred loads of free laundry detergent. Um, we'll really earn your trust. We'll give you a hundred loads of soap for free just to really? give us a try. And yeah, seriously. So we, we'll, we'll send you guys a link, put it in the show Thank notes. You. And, you know, yeah, so your community can get some free laundry detergent, try it out, and we'll earn your trust. We won't even yeah. ask you to trust us. We'll, we'll, we'll earn it. We'll earn it. Um, yeah. And so we're everywhere, you know, all the social platforms at Truly Free Home or Truly Free. Um, and love to connect. So hit me up and, um, you know, inspire others to create change. I love it. And Stephen, how can people, if, if they, um, if they, if they fill in their heart, you know, called to help support, um, some of the, the work that you're doing with women and children, um, where, where should they go to learn more about supporting those organizations or is buying your products just enough because you guys are clearly by buying our products, but no, you can go to seedlivelihood.com, uh, Caribbean Christian center, cccd.org, um, is another one foundation for his ministry, FFHM, another amazing uh, cause. The other things that I mentioned are 100% grassroots funded directly through us. You know, the stuff that we do also in Mexico, Haiti, Dominican Republic, um, we directly fund projects. So there's no nonprofit. Uh, maybe one day we'll start a nonprofit or a foundation. But for right now, we just take profits and pour it into people. You're amazing, Stephen. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, love to have I you only back do as I see um, my father doing. <laughs> love to have you back. Um, we didn't even get a chance to talk about dryer sheets and how, how toxic those are, but we'll do that on another day. Yeah, that sounds great. Well, I appreciate it. Keep up your great work. The world needs more of you, right? Telling people the truth. So keep Thank it up. Thank you.